Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Happy Halloween everybody. Hope everybody has a safe, wonderful, enjoyable weekend. I know my kids have uh, two separate parties tonight, so it should be a lot of fun. Although trick-or-treating all starts on Monday, you're going to get a lot of trick-or-treaters today because again, a lot of little kids, well, they can't wait. So hopefully everybody has a festive uh, Halloween, right? So today we're gonna start a little bit different, right? We're gonna go back to 2007. If you guys remember, uh, 2007 started the whole mortgage mess, right? The whole, uh, if you watched the movie, um, if you watched the movie, The Big Short, right? It was all about the mortgage mess and the financial crisis and Lehman Brothers collapsing and Bear Stearns collapsing. Uh, every lender going out of business, Bank of America uh, swallows up uh, Merrill Lynch, one of the most uh, sought out um, prestigious institutions on Wall Street. And we were facing as a global community, right? Not just us in the United States. We were facing uh, a capital crunch, right? Almost like an Armageddon type of effect. And from 2007 to 2009, it felt like there was just no bottom. It really wasn't. It really felt like there was no bottom. Uh, companies were going out of business, people are losing their jobs, people are losing their homes, they're going bankrupt. Uh, we, we, again, we, there, was no, there was no light at the end of the tunnel um, for our future. And then one day, right, three years later, one day around March, was it March? I think it was about March. I'll look at the chart in a second. I think it was about March 2009, the market stopped going down, right? And you could see this whole dramatic move on the queues from 207 to 209. And right around here, right, was the generational lows, the January, February, March, right? March 2009 was literally the generational low for the stock market, as you can see after that smooth sailing all the way up. You can't even see how high these candles go, but all the way up, right? The biggest bull market uh, we had in a very, very long time. And the reason why I bring that up, during that time, we had something that was called the death spiral, right? An uncertainty of, of our future. And everybody kept on saying, well, what is this market? When is this market finally going to stop going down? Nobody even asked the question, when is it going to go up? The question was, when is it going to finally stop going down? Is it, is it when everything goes to zero? And that was literally on the table. And then one day uh, in, well, I guess it was March, uh, the first week of March 2009, the market just stopped going down. And not only did we stop going down, as we talk, talked about in the last couple of minutes, we put in the generational bottom and here we are today. And the moral of the story is sometimes the market is not going to just turn around and say, well, everything has changed, right? Now everything has been wiped clean. Everybody gets a mulligan upward and onward, right? The market just sometimes does irrational things. And when sellers get dried up and when bad news continues to get gobbled up and eventually buyers and sellers are immune, they're numb to it, right? I mean, every single day from 2007 to 2009, all you're hearing is bankruptcy, bankruptcy. This company's going to zero. That one's going to zero. People can't take it anymore. Prozac, I'm sure, was at the all-time highs. So the market stopped. Nobody in the market didn't tap you on your shoulder and say, okay, this is the bottom. The bottom was just the bottom. And we started moving higher. And nothing materialistically changed for years. If you guys remember, it took it took probably the average family, you know, four, five, six years to kind of recover what happened, right? There was just a lot of damage being taken down. And the one thing that we know, uh, the stock market from Main Street, right? Wall Street from Main Street is disconnected a lot of times. So nothing materialistically has to change for the course of direction to turn. It turns kind of on a dime. And fast forward where we were two weeks ago, right? If you guys remember the first CPI that came out in September started this whole, you know, this latest nasty realm of selling. 1,200 points in the Dow, just absolute destruction. And then here we were on, you know, same thing, October the 13th, there was another CPI and we gapped up that day up 300 points to only go down 500 points in a matter of minutes after the CPI uh, was, was, um, was announced only to rally from that day. And from that day, the market put in at least a short term bottom, right? We could all agree on that. Here's the bottom. There's nothing lower than this bottom. So 
Apparently that's a short term bottom. So the most important part was the similarities. Again, nobody is going to compare what we have, what happened to us in 2007 to 2009, the kind of where we are now. But the one thing that is the common denominator is sellers got numb, buyers got numb. It almost became, we almost became institutionalized in thinking every single day, no matter where you stands in the market or where your, your process is or what type of trader you are, the theme was, we're gonna go lower, we're gonna go lower. God, Lord, bar, please, why, hope, why are we going lower? And the most important part just to remember is the stock market never makes sense. It, it will never make sense. Don't try to overthink it. You know, price action is price action. That's why I would never go on on one of these recordings and start talking about what I think is going to happen. I've been saying this every single video. I'm an idiot. Okay. All of us are idiots. Our opinions don't matter. I don't care what the Fed's doing. You shouldn't care what they're doing, especially if you're an intraday trader, right? If you're an intraday trader, we are trading one day at a time. Okay. What happens with the Fed in the next meeting, right? And I believe this Fed minutes coming out on Wednesday. What's the difference? We're preparing for Monday, right? We're not preparing for Wednesday. We're not preparing for three Wednesdays from now. We're not preparing for another CPI next month. We're preparing for Monday, okay? And the one thing is, I, I think a lot of new traders, especially in your first three to five years, you put so much emphasis, right, about trying to be right and trying to be perfect and not looking foolish and not looking stupid that you are going to overthink everything, okay? Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, you're going to overthink because you don't want the backlash. Anybody who's been trading for a long time, I'm going on my 24th year, but if you're trading at least, let's just say a decade, right? Seven to 10 years, more, more on the decade side of it. Eventually, you're gonna become numb, okay? You're gonna be so comfortable in your own skin that you don't need opinions, okay? You don't need to have healthy dialogue. You don't need to pull uh, the whole Twitter, social media universe, what they think is gonna happen. Because nobody knows and nobody cares, right? If you're keeping score, you're doing it wrong. If you're doing it for popularity and clicks and shares and like, you're doing it wrong. So if you're talking about what you think is gonna happen three weeks from now because the Fed or on Wednesday, look, it, it's counterproductive to what you're possibly seeing in front of you, right? We've had a pretty resilient market. If you've been watching this just, just re, uh, video, just, for, just this week, right? We've been talking about how incredibly resilient the market is. If you told me this week that Microsoft was gonna blow up, Google was gonna blow up, Meta was gonna blow up, Amazon was gonna blow up, and the Nasdaq was up 2%, you're, you're, you're saying to yourself, how, right? If you look at what the scoreboard did th this week, which was, Phenomenal, okay, absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we're just gonna use the diamonds. The Dow Jones went up 6%, okay? The S&P went up uh, almost 5%, and oh, by the way, reclaimed the 50-day moving average. The idea that the NASDAQ, with all those heavy hitters, was up nearly 2.5% is mind-boggling. But you know what? That's the whole point. It doesn't need to make sense. You don't need to figure out why. It's just sellers got numb, right? Sellers got numb. Buyers got a little bit of confidence. They kept on over and over again, body blow after body blow after body blow. We talked about this on Wednesday's session, how important Thursday's numbers were. Because I said, if we can just withhold one more body blow, one more shot to the kidney, one more shot to the cranium, there's a shot that we could actually do something special. And, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, Apple uh, came in, saved the day. Uh, again, if you had to guess, again, what the most important company uh, in, on the market is, in the market is, it's Apple. Okay, it's obvious uh, Amazon uh, got murdered the same night a uh, Apple did. As soon as Apple stopped going down and went break even on the day and was up 50, 60 cents a dollar on, on uh, after the market, you kind of knew there was a little bit of stability, okay? And it kind of confirmed everything we saw over the past week. Earnings, bad earnings were completely engulfed. Again, guys, these are, aren't, this isn't like lattice semiconductor, okay? This isn't like, you know, Snapchat blowing up. These were Microsoft, Google, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon and Meta, right? Say what you want, whatever opinion you have on all these different companies. The point is they're, they're the, the dominant, right? They're the dominant players in the space. And the fact that the Apple, right? The Apple juggernaut that has more money than everybody put together completely stopped the bleeding. This was an incredibly bullish scenario, right? Really, really incredibly bullish scenario. Now we out of the water just yet, uh, out of the hot water just yet? No, absolutely not. But again, this is a phenomenal start. And when you see how the market starts its journey next week, key levels got taken out, right? 
you got IWM reclaim the 50 day. Remember what we talked about? 50 day bullish, below the 50 day bearish, right? You can see with your eyes, right? Over the 50 day bullish, below the 50 day bearish. We're above the 50 day on the IWM. SPY, right? Let's just talk about the SPY instead of SPX, right? Same thing. Above this light blue line, bullish. Below this light blue line, bearish. Well, we're above the light blue line. This is a bullish, bullish thing. The only ones, the only one group or uh, one one space that has not reclaimed the 50-day moving average yet is the Nasdaq 100, and that's obviously the most important one for me because that's where 90, 95% of all my trades uh, take place within this group. So if we can just, and we talked about this number here on Wednesday's video. If we can just get above, right, any close above, let's just call it 84.60, right, 284.60, 285, I think we have we start to stretch. And you can start to stretch all the way up to this 293 level. So eventually, when we finally get that line in the sand or, um, you know, whatever you want to call it, it's going to be super important that we close above 284.60. Once we close above 284.60, risk is on right and when you look at the s p when you look at the dow um they were very very you know they, they were they were brought up by incredibly old school old world global economy names right look at coke right coke phenomenal run on earnings caterpillar right phenomenal run on earnings you got general motors right phenomenal run on earnings not everything is technology but when technology starts to realize that hey everything else is going up eventually the selling right eventually the bleeding eventually is going to stop as well. And going into this week here, we got the Qs again. Any close, guys, any close over this 284, 60, 285 level. It's a green light. So if you are a swing trader, remember, over the 50-day, risk on. Under the 50-day, risk off. Uh, all in all, a uh, really, uh, anyway, really good week. I mean, really, really good week. Uh, Apple obviously took the market for an incredible ride. Uh, yesterday, uh, at least for the technology space, a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, old world names kind of pushed everything up in the S and P. You had everything. You had, you had consumer cyclicals moving up. Look at the banks. Like, look, look at this. What was the last time you remember a move like this on Goldman Sachs on any bank? Right? Like banks move like three times a year. Okay. Look at this run here on banks. So the most important part as far as consumer consu consumer to consumer physical dollar to dollar distribution. Uh, you know, those type of companies, they're doing very, very well. You add the banks, you add retail, right? Look at look at Walmart. Let me look at Walmart. Walmart's breaking out out of a long channel since August. You're, you're having an incredible recipe for a potential really strong fourth quarter run. Now we just need, just need the NASDAQ 100 to join and then everything will be good. So let me give you guys a couple of names. Uh, to watch for this week. Again, we don't want to, well, you can't really chase anything. There's nothing really to chase in the NASDAQ 100, but let's start off with Apple. Uh, Apple, again, what are you going to say? Saved 164 million shares traded on Apple. It got stuffed here, obviously reclaimed the 50-day moving average. It got stuffed here into supply. If Apple can reclaim this 157, 158 on the close, this thing's going to 64, maybe it's going to 66. This is a big, big uh, area to watch. Look at Roblox. Roblox is setting up. I, I know there was some $50 uh, call buyers. I believe they have earnings this week. Keep an eye on it. It's nothing to do with earnings. I, I, I think if this thing could, could go before earnings, it's it's gotten rejected back to back levels at the top of the range here. If he could wake up, maybe you could see 49, 48 to 50 ahead of earnings. Anything obviously uh, into earnings is a crapshoot. Who knows? Maybe it blows up. Maybe it doesn't. Um, look at DXCM for a follow through this week. Uh, had really really strong quarter. Um, you know any dips into rising 60 minute support should definitely be bought. If this thing could go sideways, I think there'll be another uh, move up. Uh, Shopify uh, had a nice quarter. Again, I don't know how great the financials were on the quarter, but had a big day, rested on Friday, again, only down nine, nine cents. If it confirms uh, the earnings highs, I think it could start its next leg up. And uh, da, 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 let me give you one more. Let me give you one more. Look at NVIDIA. Look how tight NVIDIA is getting here, guys. Look at the bottom of the range here on NVIDIA. You see this? Look how tight this is. This is super tight. This is what, what so, This is like the best setup that if it could confirm, man, we have a lot of room. You know, if this thing confirms the top of the channel here, we got like $14, $15. Again, check earnings. I think they're either this week or next week, but definitely, definitely check earnings on NVIDIA. Uh, obviously, a lot of names uh, look good as well. If you do your research uh, over the weekend, you'll find something that fits your, your lifestyle, your experience level, your account size, 
and your process. Guys, God bless. Stay blessed. Have an awesome, wonderful, healthy, happy Halloween weekend. And with God's help, I'll see you all on Monday. Take care.